Hello, good evening and welcome to In The Know, brought to you by The Racing Post and uh, Coral for a very special bonus show. It is, of course, the first week in November. Uh, it is absolutely freezing outside, uh, but luckily we are imagining we're not in London after all. We're actually in Southern California at Del Mar for the Breeders' Cup, which, of course, uh, uh, we've got a four-day meeting at Del Mar with uh, two days at Father Breeders' Cup and some fantastic action, US versus uh, Europe, of course, uh, and and uh, we're on the dirt and the turf at uh, one of the uh, the tightest tracks uh, over in the uh, the US for some uh, for some fascinating action and hopefully uh, we can find a few winners as uh, well. So while few of you will be uh, prepping for the the Grand Sefton at Aintree or maybe the back end of heavy ground action at Doncaster on the flat, like I said, we're going to get stuck into some top class action, plenty of uh, greater performers and 37 uh, British and uh, Irish challengers uh, travelling over uh, to take on the Americans in their backyard on the West Coast. So thanks for joining us. This is live, of course, uh, on YouTube and uh, on Facebook Live as well. So please uh, like and subscribe to the, uh, the stream on, uh, on YouTube uh, and I've got the chat box right here in front of me so uh, if you think you're a bit of a US expert or you're following some of your favorite European animals uh, from the uh, at the flat season gone by then please do get in touch and we'll get your uh, selections out here uh, on the show as the evening goes on. Uh, let's uh, introduce our panel then as we get involved. Uh, normally this show of course is brought to you by Paul Keeley and, uh, and Tom Siegel but I mean, what do they know about US racing, let's be honest. Uh, but luckily, the, uh, the man to my left knows uh, more than they do at times 200. Uh, it is, of course, uh, the one and only Mr. Tom Collins, who is absolutely not dressed for the weather. <laughs> I'm not. It's absolutely freezing here, Ross. But uh, You're dressed like you're in California right I'll now. Tell you what, I wish I was. Going yeah. to Del Mar, that would be an amazing experience. I've uh, never been there, but I, I hope to get there in the near future. The uh, best two-day meet in the world coming up, Ross. Really looking forward to this. The best two-day meet in the world. Okay, strong claims there from Tom Collins. Uh, now, you, uh, you've you you've always been into your US racing, but yes. uh, since the, one of the, the upsides of the, the pandemic, of which mm -hmm. I think there are, what, two, maybe three, <laughs> uh, <laughs> was that you could you could spend a bit more time uh, when the U uh, the UK racing stopped uh, getting stuck into that US action and you made a bit of a name for you. Uh, bit, you made a bit of a name for yourself, Tom. Thank you. Yeah, well, I mean, as you say, a big perk of lockdown was the fact we got to witness the likes of Will Rogers Downs over here um, when UK racing came to a halt. And yeah, it seems like US racing has been put to the forefront of people's attention uh, more than it was prior. Um, and obviously the Breeders' Cup is, the, co is the, the culmination of a brilliant season. So I'm really looking forward to this. Hopefully we get some few, a few winners along the way, Ross. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, Tom Collins in the studio then uh, here in, uh, in London. Uh, and uh, we've got a very special guest uh, all the way from the US uh, as uh, well. It is West Coast uh, Racing Action, uh, but live from the East Coast. Uh, we have uh, racing analysts, we uh, have a, a paddock expert, show jumper, uh, you name it. Jessica Paquette, Jessica Paquette can do it, uh, which is certainly more than I can uh, pronounce her name. But uh, thanks ever so much for joining us, Jessica. Uh, sorry you couldn't make it to Del Mar, uh, but surely this is the next best option. Absolutely the next best thing. And Tom, what a man after my own heart. Will Rogers Downs and the Breeders' Cup are on par for me. I like <laughs> racing of all levels. Um, and should be an amazing weekend. I think the cards have shaped up really interesting. Of course, a couple of pretty key scratches, but we'll get into that a little bit later. But thrilled to be joining you guys. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. Um, just, to, just to give a, a bit of uh, a career history, Jessica, uh, joining us on the show for the first time. Um, you, uh, you're based in Boston, is that right? But, uh, uh, and you, uh, you, I mean, I've made a 400 mile round trip today to do this show, uh, but your weekly commute kind of puts that in the shade a little bit. So I've had a really amazing career in racing. Everything good in my life has come from racehorses. I was at Suffolk Downs kind of until the very end, had the time of my life at the East Boston Oval. And this past summer, I went to Colonial Downs for the first time, and I'll be at Sam Houston this winter in Texas. So hopefully going somewhere warm. Uh, the, the warmer, the better for me. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and talk to us about uh, Del Mar. You, you were due to visit this year, weren't you? You haven't actually been to the, the track before, but uh, unfortunately, um, an injury has uh, has put pay to your your trip, and you're now uh, be you're able to empathise with the uh, the trials and tribulations that jockeys go through every uh, every day. 
So I know it's very easy to criticize a rider when you think from your couch that they have made a choice that you po couldn't possibly have made. But I uh, suffered an injury very similar to what a lot of riders suffer. About a month ago, I had an unfortunate freak riding accident and had a very serious fall where I wound up in the hospital for four days with a crushed vertebrae of my L4. Very fortunate to walk away from that and to have a prognosis for a full recovery, but it's an unpleasant time right now. So this weekend, if you think a jockey maybe didn't make the right choice, keep that to yourself and donate some winnings to uh, Disabled Jockeys Foundation and help them because not all of them are as lucky as I've been. Yeah, absolutely. They are uh, quite literally risking their life for our entertainment. So it's always worth bearing that in mind when uh, uh, when your selections are being done on the line uh, for uh, for uh, for a single bet. So uh, yeah, thanks ever so much for joining us, Jessica. Hopefully you'll be uh, you bring us a, a few winners yourself as well. And I'm, you know, I'm not getting carried away, but I reckon uh, I reckon at least three each. That's my that's my level. For Guaranteed. You cool. Guaranteed. Okay, there we go. Uh, Simon Clare is also joining us, uh, of course, uh, from sponsors uh, Coral and uh, and Simon. I mean, the the enthusiasm from Jessica and Tom, uh, I reckon, is going to be uh, going to be uh, tripled by you because uh, uh, you love a Breeders' Cup, and unfortunately, you're not there either. You you you're stuck at home as well. So we, next year, let's do this. Let's do this from life on the yeah. track. Most definitely, most definitely. I, I've been very lucky enough in my Coral career to have been at every. Breeders' Cup from 1997 until 2019, missed last year because of the pandemic, and somehow convinced myself that this year was going to be too complicated with COVID testing and visas, etc. Yet all my colleagues from the, the media, the broadcasters, they're all out there. I'm watching them all on social media and on you know various uh, channels. So, um, but I love it. I, I must admit, everyone who knows me knows that this is the meeting I love most. I'm very lucky. I go to the other Festival, Grand National, Royal Ascot Derby, all you know, great meeting. But I love the Breeders' Cup. I love the, the backstretch access you get all week when you see all the horses on the, the surface working, something you don't get in England. When you see the trainers and jockeys up close, uh, you know, doing their stuff, the last minute preparations. And that whole Europe versus America Ryder Cup feel and um, that we probably feel even more than the American. But it's, it's, a, it's an incredible meeting. And um, yeah, and, and some of my best racing memories would be the likes of Giants Causeway Saki, Zanyasha against Blaine, Ravens Pass winning the Classic. We waited a long time for a Classic win, but it was on the synthetic. And, uh, you know, so they roll off the tongue. I, I, you know, listening to a Tom Durkin commentary it would be one of my, my racing sort of highlights. And I was to want to just pluck something off the uh, nostalgia, uh, nostalgia sort of shelf. Well, I'm, uh, I'm terribly sorry you couldn't be there this uh, this year, Simon. <laughs> but uh, we will we'll make it uh, out next year. It's the next best thing, Ross. The next best. Thing. It is absolutely. Uh, I, I've been. I went to Santa Anita in 2012 uh, to, uh, to to the Breeders' Cup. I did a Breeders' Cup Melbourne Cup double. Uh, which was uh, which was quite spectacular. I'll never do that again, I don't think. But no, um, no. it was it was quite it's quite strange being at Santa Anita because I mean obviously it is it's a huge huge meeting. Um, uh, but until Tony Bennett started singing, <laughs> quite frankly, you know, it felt like I was just it was just an average day at the races a little bit because that's it's it's a. Uh, you know, there's people. There's a lot of handicappers there. You know, it's very. Uh, it just felt like everyone was there. Was like, yeah, sure, it's a Breeders' Cup. We just we've come to the races. I don't know. I'm not saying it didn't have a special feel, mm. um, but it just felt like <laughs> everyone was like, yeah, well, this is what we do. This is what we do every year. Yeah, um, it's a completely different feeling to over here at say Royal Ascot or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, there's I, people there in short. Yeah, essentially like in shorts and t-shirts, yeah, exactly. just going, yeah, sure, it's a Breeders' Cup. It's just a, it's, it's, exactly. It's just getting stuck into it. Um, but uh, Tony Bennett, though, I'm sure had a great time. <laughs> oh, I mean, he's you a great don't know Tony Bennett, is he? No, I do, I do, I do. I've never seen him live, though. <laughs> You've never seen him live. He should have been at Santa Anita uh, in 2012, where uh, I didn't back a single winner. So uh, let's hope it, uh, it gets a little bit better uh, for the Breeders' Cup at uh, Del Mar. Let's talk about Del Mar, uh, Tom. Um, the the track, uh, yes. it's uh, it's incredibly tight. Of course, we've got uh, we've got turf and uh, and dirt to to contend with. Um, how are the European horses going to fare on this uh, on this track on the uh, on the grass? Well, that's a great question. That's the question everyone wants to know, isn't it? We've got so many horses over there this year. Um, Delmar, have, of course, held the Breeders' Cup once back in 2017. If you look back at a few of those replays, you can kind of see how the races are going to develop again. Um, for example, the Juvenile Turf Sprint, which we're going to talk about first, was won by a European. So it would be a great start again this time around if that happened. Uh, it's a tight turning track, especially on the turf, the inner turf. Um, I expect pace to come to the fore in the races. Also, those drawn low having a massive advantage. Okay, and, uh, and Jessica, talk to us uh, about the dirt. Of course, um, uh, from a European perspective, we we really don't get to see uh, to get to see a lot of it. Um, obviously, we were, you know, we thought, great, you're going to get the synthetics, and we can come over and, and mop up those races as well. But that soon disappeared at Santa Anita, uh, and we're back on the uh, the dirt. How does the uh, how does the dirt ride at Del Mar? 
I, it's a it's a quick tight track, and I think a really interesting dynamic this year is the influx of horses from Japan. It, uh, this rate these days have always shaped up to be European versus American, but this influx of Asian horses is really fascinating, and I think the Japanese horses might have a big say this weekend. Okay, well we'll soon find out. We've uh, of course it is a four day meeting at Del Mar, Jessica. And I just have a look at the results from uh, from yesterday, um, and uh, again, given a tight track, of, you know, if you're betting at UK tight tracks, often a lot of time you want to be on on the speed and on the front runners, but uh, it certainly wasn't unfavourable for the closers from what I could see. That's what I saw yesterday as well. It really it looked like it was playing quite fair, and I'm curious how it continues today. And but by all accounts, they haven't gotten any weird weather. There should be nothing that should change the dynamic of the track. Okay. Uh, well, uh, let's hope we can uh, get stuck into this uh, this Del Mar meeting uh, and uh, and get involved and hopefully find a few winners as well. But a reminder, of course, uh, it is of course safer gambling week as well this week. And this is the thing with the, the Breeders' Cup. Every every year that I've, I've I've got stuck into it and got involved in it, you can get to the point where you start to convince yourself that you know I know the US form just as well as everyone else. I've downloaded those DRF uh, cards and I've got stuck into those Bayer figures. But uh, remember that uh, you know it, it, it's tougher and uh, you know to stake accordingly as well. You don't have to bet in every single race for a start so uh, just uh, uh, take it easy enjoy the uh, the ride and enjoy the racing and um, but we can afford and hopefully we can uh, we can have a good time at Del Mar over the next couple of nights um, so let's get stuck into the racing the uh, the 950 at, uh, at Del Mar uh, is the first race we're going to have a look at uh, the uh, the Breeders Cup juvenile turf sprint we're going to focus on 10 races over the, uh, the course of two days uh, and then we're also going to get best bets for the other ones that we don't necessarily uh, focus on but of course Friday night uh, it's uh, it's all about the juveniles and we start off uh, over the five furlongs and what do you know Wesley Ward trains the favorite here uh, and the second favorite in fact uh, in the shape of Averley Jane at five to two Twilight gleaming at nine to two uh, then we've got Twilight Jet going over uh, for the the first of the European challenge uh, challenges for uh, uh, the O'Callaghan stable 13 to two one timer uh, 15 to two armor uh, coffee maker 14s and 16 to one bar those Tom Collins no surprise to see Wesley Ward with a uh, with a favorite here and um, the the market principle is going to be the pace in the race. Yes, well, I think there's two pace setters in here: Avery Jane being one, and Twilight Jet. Uh, I'm sorry, and one timer being the other. And they're interestingly drawn in eight and nine. Um, as you mentioned, Wes Ward has won this race for the last two years, Golden Pal and Four Wheel Drive. Actually, this race has only been a Breeders' Cup race um, for three years. Prior to that, it was on the undercard. Um, so the last time this race was actually run at Del Mar. Um, in 2017. This wasn't actually a Breeders' Cup race. However, the first four home that day were all European horses. The pace completely collapsed. Mm -hmm. Declaration of Peace came through for Aidan O'Brien and Ryan Moore. I think it could be a similar situation this year. Now, I'm saying that despite the fact that I've actually backed Abelie Jane anti-post after she won the Indian Summer. Um, she's not going to be my selection in the race because I've got on a much bigger price. I think 5-2 to two is plenty short enough. Um, and I want to be opposing her with two Europeans. Okay, uh, you've left that dangling, tantalisingly <laughs> uh, ahead of us. Then uh, two Europeans uh, against them. I mean, you've got you've got plenty of choices here, haven't we? Uh, and like you said, it was it was dominated by Europeans. It was pro like it was a it was a proper uh, uh, fighting for room on the home straight and rattling home. Declaration of peace won it for Aidan O'Brien and Ryan Moore. Um, Ryan Moore's got a good chance this year, and I think you you fancy his ride with one of them. Yes, definitely on armour um, for Richard Hannon. This horse has been so consistent this year. He's a son of Memas. Uh, Memas is his progeny over here are very quick and over in the US he's starting to get these these horses his offspring are coming to the fore going global is one for Phil D'Amato he runs uh, she runs sorry on the undercard on Saturday as well one to keep an eye on um, but Arm has just been so consistent ran in the middle park last time finished third didn't get the ideal trip that day but cruised through the race over six furlongs burst through a gap and just didn't have the, the necessary finishing kick to fend off the likes of Perfect Power who I think is really talented so I think the drop back to five furlongs will suit firm ground clearly no issue I think the key to Armour is that the Breeders' Cup hasn't been an afterthought for him. Mm. Richard Hannon's been mentioning this for months, um, and I think he's going to be spot on from a decent draw. Ryan Moore's won this race before, and the pace collapse could just suit him. Okay, uh, Armour is a, a 15 to 2 shot. What was the other one, by the way? The other one is Hierarchy. Okay. Um, for Oshin Murphy and Hugo Palmer. Not as well drawn, I think, in Gate 5, purely because I don't think she's the quickest, uh, she's the quickest away, sorry, he's the quickest away from the stools. Now that could become an issue if the um, the two pace setters in eight and nine come across Abelie Jane and one timer. However, if Ashin could get him out, he has natural speed that can put him in a prominent position. He he's raced really prominently um, in the Sirena Stakes. Great turn of foot up the inside, which was unfavoured that day. Um, eventually faded out of contention into third over six furlongs. Last time out again, burst to the front in the Mill Reef, got beaten to, uh, in the final hundred yards by Wings of War. Dropped back in triple suit. Okay, uh, Ashin Murphy and Hugo Palmer there. Uh, teaming up with uh, with Hierarchy, uh, who's a uh, a pretty big price, uh, Simon. What price Hierarchy? Hierarchy is twenty to one. 
20 to 1 uh, for the hierarchy then. Uh, Jessica, coming over to you then, uh, the uh, the European to my left, just tip two European horses. Uh, will you be uh, being patriotic as well with the uh, with the American challengers? Well, I do think Averly Jane looks awfully tough. I loved her effort on the turf. She switched to the grass for the first time. And while she had been impressive on the dirt, I thought she was okay on the dirt on the turf she made me take notice i thought she got over the grass really well my only concern with her is it was a little bit of a softer turf course to keeneland that day and the del mar turf course is very different it's much harder it's much tighter and while that does play to her running style i wonder if she gets over it quite as well that said i think she's the one to catch i think she'll be a big factor on the front end i am the more i look through the past performances just so intrigued by number three go bears go the blinker's on. I mean, he's going to be involved in the pace. He's another one that could contribute to this eventual pace collapse. But that short stretch at Del Mar, I think he's pretty interesting. And I like that he's been keeping pretty good European company as well. And prior to that last race, he'd been holding his own. The thing that makes me like him the most, though, is the uh, John Velasquez aboard. I don't think there's any domestic rider on the turf better than Johnny V. Okay, yeah, yeah, go Bears, go. It's a 16 to 1 shot. And bear in mind, it's only got, what, a neck to find with armour. Um, the uh, the price does seem a little big. And owners' ammo racing are not afraid to experiment with uh, with trips as well. They uh, they do tend to uh, send a lot of their uh, horses over uh, a variety of trips. They had a winner uh, the other day at Nottingham. We were running everything from five furlongs to a mile. So uh, go Bears, go of interest in. Can I ask your opinion on, uh, on Corfu Maker, uh, Jessica? Because um, if there is a, a pace collapse, is there a potential from box two that... Um, this horse could be uh, overpriced for Wesley Ward? Sure, you kind of have to think that Wesley Ward's playing a little bit of chess here on the assumption that Avery, Jane, Avery Lane or Avery Jane uh, may actually get hooked early, which does set it up for this filly. Uh, and I think this filly's coming into it also in, you know, in pretty good order. Hasn't won since that maiden win. But I like that she shipped. I like that she went to Europe and while that didn't go very well, it's, it was an ambitious effort and he clearly thought well enough of her to send her. Okay, um, so, okay. Uh, so what's the pick for you, Jessica? You know, a lukewarm Averly Jane over Go Bears Go, and I will be using Twilight Gleaming to round out my trifecta. Okay. See, this this is the thing. This is the thing about uh, American tips as well, Jessica. It's um, you know, we sometimes we have to we have to try and desperately to to nail a British tipster down to one selection. Never mind <laughs> trying to put a trifecta up. So, uh, are you are, do, are you, do you regularly play the exotics? I do, um, and occasionally. I'm not going to say it always works out in my favor, but I had one great trifecta in the Kentucky Derby a couple of years ago when maximum security got DQ'd, uh, and that trifecta paid for my horse showing all summer. So <laughs> once in a while, a blind squirrel finds a nut. No, well, that's the thing, isn't it? I think I think it's a it's a key thing. Sometimes um, I was talking to a friend of mine today, and he was saying he's had an up and down year, but October he hit a couple of big bets, and that's uh, and and that's pretty much the uh, the year pay for. So sometimes if you can just chip away, you get one that comes in. Uh, Simon Clare, uh, you uh, are uh, disappointed you're not at Del Mar, but hopefully you can pick out a few winners for us. Uh, what do you make of this uh, uh, this juvenile turf sprint? Yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's a really tough race. Avery Jane, I think, has got a stand up chance. I mean, you know. Looks, looks by far the, the best horse on form in the field. Just that nagging doubt that, that she hasn't run on a really fast surface, I think, is a concern. Um, but I, the two I like, probably the guy, you know, Jessica and um, uh, and Tom have talked about, Armour is getting a lovely position to get a toe into the race because either side of him, he's got pace, and I think he's got five full on forms and cracking five full on forms. A really high class two year olds coming over for this race, actually. Yeah. You sort of see his type more likely to go generally for the juvenile. Uh, turf, but he's, he's ended up here and he's got the speed. He's going, going to go well, and I do like Goes Bear Go. He's a bit of a he's a bit of an afterthought there, Go Bear's Go, but he's got that second in the north and that great form. And the fact he does stay six furlong, seven furlong well, if he can get out and get a good position from that three stall, I think then you know you know this is a trap which does suit horses coming from behind. The pace does melt. So as a value bet, I think Go Bear's Go and Armour. I'm a bit of a I'm a bit of a page. You know, I always end up back in the the uh, European horses. I can't help myself. So I think I'm probably going to play them. But I think it'd be no surprise in this race, given Wesley Ward's sort of their form in this type of contest to see Averly Jane win and win well, a bit like Golden Pal did last year. Okay, yeah. But I mean, it'd be key. It's, it's one of those classic races that after about a furlong, all our opinions will uh, soon yeah. change, depending on how uh, strong the early pace is. Uh, Duff's at home says Averly Jane romps this uh, and uh, a uh, Go Bears Go each way for, for Off World. Uh, and uh, David Pym says back US horses at UK prices. That's the other thing as well. Yeah, you can uh, pay uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the old compilers off against each other. So the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint, the 950 at Del Mar, Tom Collins, two against the field. Armour and Hierarchy. Okay, uh, Jessica, uh, give us the one, two, three. The one, two, three, we're going with 
Avery Jane, Go Bears Go, the three, the uh, the eight, the three, and the six. Okay, Simon. Okay. I'll play Armour and Go Bears Go each way against the favourite. Lovely, and now we'll go with Armour and Coffee Maker to stalk the pace and uh, uh, and uh, hit it down the straight as uh, well. So, 9.50 at Del Mar, uh, we've got a lot of races to get through, so let's rattle on. Um, quick stop in the 10.30 at uh, Del Mar, the, uh, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Fillies. Uh, this wasn't. This isn't gonna, a race that we're going to uh, dig uh, too deeply into. We've got a short price favourite in Echo Zulu, uh, and just the six runners are on the, uh, the dirt. But uh, Jessica, of course, uh, you were saying you uh, are a, a regular visitor to uh, Colonial Downs, and um, we've got a, a couple of horses who broke their maiden at that track, and it's a big day for them here in this, uh, this second race uh, that we're going to be looking at at Del Mar. So it's really exciting to see two fillies that I got to see make their debuts when I was the handicapper at Colonial Downs this summer, Hidden Connection and Sequest. Hidden Connection, far and away the flashier of the two. She came back, won the Pocahontas, looked like a really good thing. She looks like she might be pretty special. However, I'm trying to take a little bit of a long shot. I think Sequist may may win the war when all is said and done. Hidden Connection, I think, might actually wind up being more of a one-turn miler. She got two turns very impressively last time, but I think that was a little bit by attrition. She didn't have that much up against her. Whereas Sequist, just getting better the longer the races get and the more she figures it out. Her come-from-behind maiden win at Colonial was one of the most impressive performances I saw all season. Okay, so okay. Uh, and are we... Is that just, are you playing through the heart there or is that, is that the genuine form claims for them too? Honestly, I don't like Echo Zulu at all. And I think four oh, to five is going to be way too me. short on her. I, she, you know, she's really unproven at this distance. And I think it's a little bad racing karma spinning Santana off of her after uh, going through a slump when the majority of his slump came for Steve Asmussen. Okay, fair enough. All right, so this could be a race of play then. Uh, Tom Collins, you are nodding uh, furiously next to me. <laughs> yes, no, I, I completely agree with what Jessica said. I, I don't like the fact that, um, that Santana's been taken off, Joel Rosario's been put on. Uh, Steve Asmussen at Keeneland, one from 57. The, the barn's in a massive slump at the moment. Right, you can't blame Santana for that. Exactly. Just because his record wasn't great, it was all in your horses, Steve. It, exactly, exactly that. And also, Eka Zulu, not only has she been competing against New York um, opposition, which are weaker than she'll face here, she's unproven at the trip, um, and I think she's going to get pressed early as well by Juju's map, who's my idea of the winner. Okay, so uh, okay, so we're taking we're taking Echo Zulu on then. I, I mean, again, if we're playing the exotics, then we've got to box a few up against the five, haven't we? Yeah, definitely. Hidden Connection is the interesting horse coming in here, unproven at the at the level. Juju's map, I think, is the proven horse. Won the Alcibiades last time for a leading trainer in Brad Cox. I think if you just uh, take Echo Zulu out of the equation, then you've got a, a decent exotic there. Okay, there we go. Uh, uh, Fast and Furious then for the Juvenile Phillies. Lovely stuff. Uh, play it with a straight bat. Take on the favourite there for uh, the ten uh, thirty at Del Mar. Uh, let's move on to the uh, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies uh, turf uh, here. Uh, Fourteen uh, runners on on fast going and absolutely wide open stuff here uh, with uh, with Bubble Rock at the, at the top of the betting at thirteen to two. Koala Princess seven to one. Hello you, uh, the first of the European challenges at fifteen to two. Consumer spending eight to one. Haughty eight to one. Piet, uh, Pizza Bianca is also eight to one. Ten to one. Cairo Memories and Cache. This looks one of the toughest races on the uh, the entire weekend, Jessica. Uh, but the main thing that stands out to me. Um, and I had to go back, you know, quite a way to find a winner of this race that wasn't proven at the trip. Yet the market is made by two horses who are stepping up from sprints. That's an interesting thing, and I uh, some of them make sense pedigree wise. A couple of these horses, I think, will really excel with a little bit more real estate. But this, to me, seems like such a wide open race. A lot of different ways you can go. Uh, I'm going for a little bit of a price here myself with Hottie. I think Chad Brown, as always, has an embarrassment of riches in these races. And for him to step this filly up after only that maiden win, though technically she finished first twice, but she got DQ'd out of that debut. I think that speaks to a level of confidence. And you couldn't have asked for a horse to be more visually stunning than she was last time. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, Horty is uh, an eight to one shot. What's the big danger, Jessica? You know, I I really like Bubble Rock. Um, this is one of those horses kind of stretching uh, stretching out and yeah, really unproven uh, at two turns, but bred up and down. This horse just screams distance more than ready out of a Giants Causeway mare and a little nod to more than ready, who's very well represented in this race. And for a stallion his age to still be producing these world class type runners, uh, just what a gift he's been to the domestic breeding program. Okay, so uh, Haughty then and uh, and Bubble Rock, uh, uh, the the two far for Jessica in the juvenile fillies mm -hmm. at turf. Uh, uh, let's have a, a quick talk. Uh, in fact, I've got to come to you, uh, Simon, because you've had uh, uh, you've done an in depth 
uh, video preview on, on Hello Yous um, journey over to, uh, to Del Mar. This is a horse I've pretty much followed off a cliff since that Wolverhampton debut win. Um, all year I thought this is a proper group class uh, filly and uh, David Lofname will be, will be hoping that's, uh, that's true at the top level here. It is, yeah. We, we decided to, to, to follow um, her journey over to sort of first in the UK, interviewing David, David and then um, but, you know, trying to get some footage almost of the actual journey. It wasn't easy, actually, but wearing the compression suit as she came over on the transatlantic flight. And then the final episode, which we've issued this evening, just earlier then, that we came on air here on, on our social media channels, is all on the back stretch, the draw. She drew a beautiful pitch and six. Um, and, and actually, David and Shelley, the, the work rider and the travelling uh, the groom and um, both speak beautifully about this sort of almost living the dream of being out here at the Breeders' Cup. And uh, so because of that, I'm I'm very much invested in her now. And you kind of look at her form. She, she, she changed stables from Rafe Beckett to uh, David Lovnain uh, over the summer. Um, her win in the Rock Bell looks really decent form, strong form. Um, he's a seven furlong horse, which I think be perfect for this. Got form on fast ground. Uh, and, and as Jessica points out, John Velasquez is probably one of the best, if not the best turf, American jockey, or well, one of the best American jockeys will stop, but really top class on the turf. Um, so I love his booking. So I think she's got a great chance. Mm, yeah, like, uh, I'm right with you. I, I agree there as well. Yeah, it's hard, it's hard to get that, that Wolverhampton win out of my mind, the way she swept <laughs> around the entire field and just rattled home down the centre. And, um, you know, she's learned at Wolverhampton that skill is going to help here at this track, isn't it? But no European winner since 2013 for when Chris Elliam won for uh, for the Charlie Hills stable. Uh, and the Americans have a very strong hand here, Tom. Yeah, it's, it's just a wide open race. You mm. can make a case for plenty of these. Consumer spending and haughty, Jessica's fancy, um, were two at the top of my list. Chad Brown has talked highly for both of those. But I just think they're going to improve in time. They look a bit green to me, uh, especially consumer spending, who has a, a pretty high head carriage. So I went elsewhere. Um, again, I've got two selections. This is the last race of just with two selections in, so I have to. No, no, you don't, you don't have that. to justify that. If, if oh, a, they're if, bigger price, they're bigger yeah. priced. No, you play you play the market how it, how it stands, so that's absolutely fine. Exactly, and one of them is a true price play, but we'll get to that in a second. The first one is Cairo Memories drawn in gate two. I think that's a big plus. There's not that much speed in here. Turn her loose is probably um, your, your likely front runner from gate four, but I imagine Kent is almost going to be aggressive from the inside gate on Cairo Memories drawn outside a horse with little speed in Pizza Bianca. Um, she broke her maiden over this course and distance, so there's a tick in the box already. Last time out in the surfer girl, she was on the pace, quickened around the bend, put the race to bed within a few strides. Helen's well was in that race and sent off favourite. Um, she reopposes, but I don't think she'll be able to reverse the form. Cara Memories is a decent value bet at 10 to 1. Um, and the other one, which is the price play, is Malavath. Now, I don't understand why Malavath is 25 to 1. I think that's ridiculous. She's eights on the morning line um, in the States. I think she... Uh, should be around 8, 10 to 1, um, and 25 is just far too big. Yes, her draw isn't ideal at all in gate 12. You don't want to be that wide, ideally, but she's just been improving with the last two runs. She's another daughter of Mamas, who I previously touched on as a sire. Last time out in the Criterium de, de uh, Maison Lafitte, maybe? At Chantilly, over there six There are a lot of Criteriums. <laughs> yeah, and also when it's made, Criterium de Maison Lafitte at Chantilly, it makes no sense. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, over six furlongs, she just burst through the pack and won easily. I think stepping up to Mar will suit her in 25 to 1. She's a great value play. Okay, there's a few against the field. We aren't even, I thought Pizza Bianca was fascinated as well. Didn't get any look at Woodbine behind Wild Beauty. Uh, there is a potential that from box one, exactly the same thing could happen again. Uh, but I think that's a, a rock solid piece of form, Wild Beauty. Is, is, is Christophe Clement still chasing his first Breeders' Cup? He is. I think he's not from 41 at the Breeders' Cup. It's incredible. Cup. Incredible, really, given he's, a, you know, he's had some yeah. terrific horses. So, and of course, Dermot Weld got off the side last year with Tarnawa. He's been trying for 30 years, so maybe that's one of the stories of the this year's British Cup will be Christophe Clement out of the winner. If at first you don't succeed, try <laughs> and try and try Don't and do 41. <laughs> again. That's our motto, Ross, for our career, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> OK, so uh, Juvenile Phillies Turf then. Uh, Jessica, uh, how are you playing it? Uh, you know, I'm going to... Uh... Use the Chad Brown fillies kind of every which way, but throwing in hello you into my exotics as well. I think she can certainly get a piece of it. Okay. Uh, okay. And Tom? Small win bets on uh, Cara Memories and Malabath. Okay, very well. Simon? Yeah, I'm just going to play hello you. It's a cracking race, 13 to do the field. It'd be easily the most competitive race actually on the whole card. Um, six, it's like a handicap, isn't it? So uh, loving this, but hello you for me. You Four places as well, just to confirm. Is that That's right, isn't it? I hope so. I haven't checked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did you check. I, I did check, but I threw it to you in, in, so that you could. <laughs> I set it up and you failed to knock it down. So. <laughs> I know. We're, well, we're also beaten by a length on all the American racing. So if your horse is beaten by a length or less, you get your money back as a free bet up to a tenner. 
Okay, uh, I think you should offer again. Uh, we should probably get in touch beforehand, but beaten by an American, I think, should be uh, <laughs> one of the uh, the money back offers uh, if you're back in uh, a European horse. Okay, uh, good luck in the Breeders' uh, Cup Juvenile Phillies Turf. Uh, uh, Chad Brown, good with Philly, says Michael Doncor. Uh, uh, Devo says that hello, you were. He was uh, there when she won the Rockville, and she wasn't stopping. Uh, and off wheels back to Kuala Princess each way. Uh, moving on to uh, the 11:15, the Breeders' Cup uh, Juvenile. Here we are uh, onto the uh, the dirt with probably one of the uh, the better fancied horses of the weekend. Uh, Chad Brown again with a very strong hand uh, here in the shape of Jack Christopher, who is 11 to eight here, 130 core niche, six to one. Uh, command performance 15 to 2 Pinehurst, 16 to 1 Barossa, 18 to 1 Bar those. Uh, Jack Christopher was uh, heavily backed on debut. Uh, they knew what they had, yep. uh, that's for sure. And he followed up at Belmont last time out and they just couldn't lay a glove on him. No, he was in a different league in, in the Champagne. It's a race that I like to use as a trial going towards um, the juvenile. He's a son of Munnings. He was all the rage in New York before his debut. No surprise, he took plenty of money and he bolted up over six furlongs. Seemed to improve for the step up to a mile, albeit he has plenty of speed, um, which I think is going to be a positive here. You don't want to be too far off the pace, especially with the likes of Corniche having to be ridden aggressively from the outside gate. Um, I've broken all the rules of price-wise, and I've put up the favourite here. Have you? Uh, yeah, I have. Uh, You're going to lose your job. <laughs> <laughs> look, he, he's been my, my biggest anti-post uh, anti play. I love this horse. I think he's pretty exceptional. He comes in here with arguably the best speed figures we've seen from any horse running in a juvenile for the last 30 years. I think if he breaks on turns, gets a clear trip from gate one, I think he's untouchable. Okay. Jessica, Jack Christopher, is he as good as he looks? I think he's that good. I don't know if he's that good at this distance. Mm. I think this horse is going to hit a wall at some point. Uh, to me, he's built like sp more of a sprinter type. He's kind of have, has this nice short coupled, very athletic build, but I'm not sure he really wants to go two turns. This is actually my strongest opinion of the day, and it's a wacky one, I admit. Uh, I'm going with number two, Jasper Great. Uh, he, he's going to get a sizable win bet for me. Okay, uh, Jasper, great then. Uh, you were saying about the, the Japanese uh, challengers. Uh, and of course, I mean, UK bookmakers as well, Then it's bad enough comparing European form to American form, but throwing the Japanese stuff into the mix is going to be very difficult. Tell us about Jasper, great. So I think it's fascinating over the past, we'll say, 20 years, uh, Japanese breeding, in, uh, breeding interests have been accumulating really good breeding stock uh, and not turf horses. They've been getting conventional dirt horses. So they're not trying to make, you know, the next great arc winner. They're trying to create a Breeders' Cup winner or a Kentucky Derby winner. And I think that this horse, I mean, he was bought domestically, but he's by Arrogate, the only crop of Arrogate. So that I think will get a little bit of attention. But this horse's female family is exceptional. He's a half to power broker who's a graded stakes winner. And the damn uh, shop again, Re Quality Mare, the second damn shopping has been a real blue hen type producer. And I think that this has been the goal with this horse. And I understand he only has a maiden win, but he's not the only horse in this race only coming in with a maiden victory. There are a couple of those Baffert horses only have a maiden win to their credit too. Uh, talk to us about the, the draw because the, the market, Corniche, Command, Performance, Pinehurst, all draw 9, 10, 12. Uh, Jasper Gray in two. Are you hoping that uh, with Jack Christopher, with that, that obvious early pace, he's just going to sit in behind and pounce on the straight? I would hope I, that's kind of my plan. And Jack Christopher may simply be too good at this point that he can run through any potential distance limitations he may or may not have. Yeah, I think I do think he is the star of the group. I just think there's a big difference between that one turn mile at Belmont and two turns here. OK, um, I was quite interested in command performance, Jessica, who um, got taken off his feet a bit behind uh, Jack Christopher. But I got the feeling again that, that the, the, the two bends, if Jack Christopher does start to run out of gas, we know that Todd Pletcher's horse is going to be grinding him down at the finish. So he's still a maiden, so he'll try to make his uh, first victory a stylish one. He's one that I certainly think has no distance limita limitations. He'll just get better kind of the more he develops and the longer the races get by union rags out of a tap at mare, just kind of bred to run all day. And you saw that last time out. He was galloping out well. He closed pretty well that day. And I think he just needs one minor step forward to get that first win. Uh, of course, the last time this was won at Del Mar, um, the, uh, the winner was a, a maiden with two seconds to his, his name, Good Magic, as well, Jessica. So hopefully history can repeat. We'll try. <laughs> and, you know, Good Magic was a nice horse for Chad Brown, who actually looks a lot like Jack Christopher. There, I can see the comparisons that people are drawing this week. Mm -hmm. However, four to five on a day like this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to take a swing. 
Okay, uh, Simon, uh, Jack Christopher, eleven to eight. Uh, you're uh, you're swerving him a bit here. Although if he's four to five in America, then maybe you uh, who we should be taking that maybe we should be taking that prize by the sounds of things. Yeah, I think it's an I think it's an important to, thing to point out. Is that, you know, as they say, price wise, as Tom would would say, if if, if he gives a four to six chance on the night, then eleven to eight does look a value play. Exactly. And you've got to got to think like that, really, because um, that is what happens. And just to talk quickly about the betting strategies when the tote boards open up and you see them on the TV you're watching, it's amazing how quickly the UK market will fall into line. So gone are the days where I think we all backed Dome Driver at 20, uh, the 28 one on the American tote when it was 8 to 1 in England and vice versa. They, they, they fought, Tom will know this from looking at Odds Checker and the, the comparison sites um, on all American racing. You don't, they don't stay out of line for long. So um, that in itself is quite an interesting phenomenon. I just thought, you know, Jack Christopher looks terrific, doesn't he? His, his big market rivals on the outside in 12. There is pace in the race for like Pinehurst and Barossa. So maybe if that... Uh, that pressure, which he didn't get in the champagne, could actually help the closers. And I thought that's where you see also like command performance who was closing all the way to the line in the champagne. Maybe he could come through. I think Action This Day was a horse I backed at many years ago. Richard Mandela trained with the Juvenile, and he was a maiden in the field and a deep closer as well. So uh, I'd love to see that happen. I'd love to see the Japanese horse run well as well. Uh, just was great. And just as a throwaway, a big prize giant. Giants game, a Giants Causeway son that Dale Rowans is so bullish about. He is a trainer who can get excited, but it costs half a million dollars. And again, I think he could be a bit of a grinder who might pick up some late action. So I might, I might have a go against the favourite here. Okay, uh, so Simon's having a go against the favourite. Tom, quite the opposite. Yes, Jack Christopher, um, my nap of the of the Friday at Delmar. Okay, very well. Uh, Jessica, you disagree. I do. I'm going to use Jasper. Jasper Gray. I'm going to put a good, good win bet on him, and then use him on top in some of my exotics with command performance. Maybe Jack Christopher underneath. I think he's good enough to stick around. Okay, and I'm going to straight bat it. Command performance in the frame. Job done. Step away. Uh, and uh, that's the uh, the, uh, the the British Cup uh, Juvenile. As we move on to the final race, we're going to be covering on the Friday. It is the British Cup Juvenile Turf. You thought uh, uh, the races were tough so far. This is an absolute <laughs> blinder. Uh, Fourteen of them uh, line up here, and uh, Modern Games is the five to two favourite. Uh, Dubawi Legend five to one. Uh, Glunthane is eight to one with Albaha uh, also at eight to one. The uh, European challengers uh, dominating. Uh, Dakota Gold is the shortest uh, of the, uh, the Americans with portfolio company uh, and slipstream uh, is at 12 to 1 tis the bomb 14s but uh, this i mean this looks an absolute uh, blinder i'm going to come to you first on because you mm -hmm. don't really have a selection in this race and um i think you kind of agree with me in the sense that i looked at this race and i kind of wanted to back half the field yeah exactly you can make a strong case for so many in here i mean my initial fancy was annapolis who's unfortunately ruled out due to injury and um, trained by todd pletcher in the states uh, just looking at this race, since the draw has been made, I think Modern Games is your most likely winner. Drawn really nicely and won inside Stable Companion, Al Bar as well, which has to be considered a positive. Um, but look, uh, there, you can make a, a solid case for Modern Games, Dubai Legend, Al Bar, Glownthorn as well for Aiden O'Brien, has got a good record in this race. Portfolio Company finished second to Annapolis in the Pilgrim last time. I think that form's reasonably strong, and he was battling all the way to the line. Um, Tis the Bomb, who I'm sure Jessica's going to touch on, touch on in seconds, a big player coming out of Keeneland. Dakota Gold is strongly fancied as well by connection. So this is a race I'll be bowing out of, um, looking towards Saturday for some, uh, some better bets. OK, and like I said, it is safe for gambling week. So again, you don't have to play in every race. If you don't have a strong opinion, don't force it, basically. Uh, but uh, Modern Games at 5-2 to, uh, to two favourite here for this, uh, for this juvenile turf, uh, uh, Jessica. Um, uh, Tom's sitting it out. But um, uh, yeah, you, you'd like the look of Tis the Bomb here, 14 to 1 shot. So sometimes horses wind up on your radar in kind of strange ways. Tis the Bomb was entered at Colonial in a sprint race. And I did my notes the night before racing, not knowing he was going to scratch. And all I could say about him was I was so intrigued to see him. But how is this horse sprinting? Why are you running him six furlongs? He should go long. And occasionally in horse racing, you get what you want. They scratched him and he wound up running long in his uh, next start and certainly was a horse that wanted to go two turns. He has not been the most impressive. There's been nothing flashy or substantial about his wins, but he's just kind of quietly passed every test, done everything they've asked of him. And I think this is a horse with a lot of depth to his pedigree, a lot of stamina. And I really like him. I think he's going to get quite overlooked. Mm. Well, I mean, the sire won this race, of course, didn't he? he the bomb. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And also, uh, with Tis the Bomb, last time out at Keeneland, he broke through the, the gates at the start. He had mm. to be taken right away round to the back, which I would usually consider, um, consider it being a negative. Came right the way back, round the back. The other horses waited in the gates. He had to be checked by the vet and still won. Um, if you mark him up for that effort, then he's a big player in here. 
Yeah, uh, I mean, like, there's loads of others in, in in here. I was a bit surprised. I guess the draw is probably the reason why modern games are shortened yeah. up so much. But um, you know, if Native Trail is such a monster, then Dubawi Legends got a big chance. I've been waiting to back Al Barho in a good race, but he's been odds on in uh, at races that he should have been at waltzing, and he has been. So he looks a bit of a monster. Uh, but the uh, the the Pilgrim Stakes. Um, uh, Jessica has a really good record in this race. I think, uh, as far as I can tell, there's only once in the last decade where uh, a horse out of that race hadn't won or, or placed in this. It's the it's a, it's the proper trial for this contest. It is, and like Tom, I really liked Annapolis going into this race. I was disappointed that he had he has to sit this out. So I'm kind of defaulting to Portfolio a Company a little bit. I think he ran very well, showed good tactical speed, and I think that running style, even though the outside post maybe isn't the most advantageous here, I think he'll be involved early. Okay, uh, Portfolio okay. Company is a, a 10 to 1 shot. Yeah, Dakota Gold beat Coinage, who arguably got a, a terrible trip through that race and could reverse the form. And Grafton Street, if you watch him behind Al Baher, uh, he is about five times the size of everything else in the field. And I can't quite work out how he's a, a two year old. So this looks a cracking race, Simon. Yeah, it's a terrific race. And I think it's an issue. I'm sort of looking at the pace angles really. There's I think it's only portfolio companies that would really want to. There's loads of stalkers and horses who sit close to the pace, but something, you know. Some horses are going to have to go. I thought Portfolio Company is really interesting. Chad Brown, if, if in doubt, in these uh, juvenile turf races, back something uh, uh, trained by Chad Brown. So at 10 to 1, I thought Portfolio Company looked a solid uh, bet. Modern Games' draw can be good, but it can be terrible. Because they all, if he doesn't get out and they all close around him, that advantage is gone. So I've, I've never, everyone often says, oh, great, draw one. But I'm never, I always think three to seven is really the perfect draw. And... Um, and that sport, that outside draw for Dubawi Legends is just so ugly. I think he's the, by far the best horse in the field. I mean, that you know, to, 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 you know, the Dewhurst form is fantastic. You don't you know, a horse of that, that sort of rating, you normally just really fancy strongly, but it's a tough draw. And um, so I thought I was also thought McKinnon stay local. I wasn't just didn't think the East Coast trials were that strong. Uh, sorry, the, the Baldwin certainly isn't that strong. And um, so I thought maybe take a little chance on McKinnon having you know won the Zuma Beach and the Juvenile Turf at Del Mar, but uh, she's got to play some value here, I think. OK, uh, very well. Um, so, uh, and Jessica, just uh, just finalise your thoughts uh, here on the Juvenile Turf. What's the pick and what are their dangers? Uh, my top selection is Tis the Bomb. I'm going to be keying him on top of a couple of horses, really liking Portfolio Company. I'm also going to use probably the Godolphin, the two Godolphin horses in the underside of my exotics. OK, very well. Okay. Uh, I'll go for Portfolio Company. Again, the, the way he battled on last time out was pretty impressive. He didn't seem that, that comfortable in a small field going that pace either, so hopefully he'll be a bit better here. Uh, and Al Baha uh, as well, I think, is uh, very much made for this uh, test. So that's the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. A uh, couple of tips at home. James Doyle's picked the wrong one, uh, says uh, Alan Keane. Uh, uh, of course, uh, James Doyle uh, uh, is uh, is on board um, uh, a Dubawi legend, and he's, he's ridden quite a few of these horses. So uh, he has clearly uh, had the uh, a big choice here uh, for that. Uh, uh, that's uh, the final race, the Juvenile Turf, on the uh, the Friday. Moving on to the uh, the Saturday, then uh, we uh, uh, are going to concentrate on a, a few races uh, on the uh, the Saturday. Um, uh, we've got the Philly Mare Sprint up there. Uh, it's not one of our uh, our feature races on the Saturday, but I'll just have a quick quick word on the the uh, the hot favourite Gamine here, Jessica, who uh, is uh, going to be. I mean, again, are you are you are you looking at this thinking I'm just going to ignore the race because this one is a uh, an open goal or like the short price favourite in the race on the Friday? Do you think there's some uh, some holes in Gamine? So as a public handicapper, I don't feel like I have the luxury of not having an opinion about these races. It's my job to to have an opinion. As a horse player, I'm sitting out the Philly and Mare Sprint. Okay, that's, that's fair enough. That's absolutely fair enough. Uh, Tom Collins, Gamine. Uh, she's the most likely winner of the race. I think she's been disappointing this season. Um, if she turns up as she did last year in the Breeders' Cup, then she'll romp. Um, but Bella Sophia is a, a decent challenger in here, pace player. It's gonna, she's going to push Gamine early. She was impressive in the test, Bella Sophia. And she's a three-year-old. Three-year-olds have won this race for the last three years. Okay, lovely stuff. Uh, so, a small field, short price for that, uh, that 7.05, but the Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint. Uh, we're going to have a proper look at here, this uh, the 7.40 contest, uh, where, uh, again, uh, five furlongs, and the uh, the British bookmakers putting Golden Pal uh, for Wesley Ward in at a short price here at five to two, eleven to two Emiratiana, thirteen to two Gear Jockey, eight to one Glass Slippers. Uh, Lieutenant Dan is eight to one with a case of you. Uh, uh, Kimari is nine to one. Uh, Arrest Me Red twelve to one. And this is a potentially quite a deep race. So familiar names like uh, Extravagant Kid uh, running as well here in this uh, this contest. But once again, Golden Pal is uh, at the uh, the top of the betting. Um, 
Jessica, I'm going to come to you because we uh, do all the we'll be doing all the big races uh, here on in the know uh, for the uh, the UK action. Uh, and when we were previewing uh, York and when we were talking about the Nunthorpe, uh, there was a man named Paul Keeley sat to my left, and he spent a good three minutes destroying every single form line that Golden Pal had so far amassed. Um, and he was well beaten behind Winter Power, yet he keeps getting sent off short prices. And uh, 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 and I want to know whether you're you're with or against him. I'm against. Uh, I think he. I think he's a very nice horse. I don't know if he's quite progressed from two to three. Some horses just get a little bit more precocious and don't make that transition. I just don't think he is a world class turf sprinter at this point in his three year old year. Okay. So why does he keep going off such short prices? You know, I, I have never been one to speculate on what uh, the public does. I think everyone sees Wesley Ward, uh, especially, and that get, gets a lot of attention. I mean, he's certainly going to break sharply. He's going to be a contender on the front end. I just don't think he's this level at this point. Okay. It is a very, very tight track, isn't it, uh, though? So from uh, from box three, how how advantageous is that early speed on the, uh, the five furlong uh, turf track? I think it's a tough ask if you're coming way, way out of it, but uh, the best horse can win from anywhere at Del Mar. It's not a major disadvantage. Okay, so uh, who will be picking him up down the straight? So I th I thought I was clever picking number eight, Caraval, and all week a bunch of people who I respect, who I also think are reasonably clever, have been picking her. So I don't know if we're going to get quite 20 to 1 on her. Uh, she's a huge price on the morning line. I still think she's an interesting contender. I was at parks for the Pennsylvania Derby day. And I watched her just absolutely languish over the soft turf horse, just would not pick up her feet over it. She looked uncomfortable the entire way. That was kind of a weird race anyway, uh, the turf monster. And I think she's a much better horse than that race indicates. I don't think that's the indicator of whether she can run with the boys and, or whether she can run at this level of competition. Uh, so I think over a tight, uh, firm turf course, she'll be much more competitive. Okay, yeah, Caravelle then, Simon. We're looking at She's huge odds here. <laughs> She's 40 to 1. I've got to say, I've, got, I've, I've written down here um, live the outsider because Graham Motion, you know, Englishman Graham Motion, has got a really good Breeders' Cup record. He never runs horses in the Breeders' Cup, you know, for fun. And he's, he's straight away, he's yes. won four and, and been second six times from 44 runners. So nearly 25% strike rate, first and second, which is a fantastic record at Breeders' Cup. Um, and so Caravelle at 40 to 1, I just thought, almost on that basis alone. There's bits and bobs of, of her form which you can make a case for. So really interesting tip, Okay. I don't think he's going to ship a horse across the country if they don't have a legitimate chance. And Absolutely. in grand motion, I trust. Yeah. I mean, she, she's owned by Bobby Flay, is that right? Who, who does love, yes. I mean, that's the only thing I thought, is Bobby Flay loves having yeah. Breeders' Cup runners. But, but yeah. Bobby has, a, has the two-year-old in, so this wasn't his yeah. only opportunity to have a horse yeah. in the race. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah, of course he's got, yeah he's got Pizza Bianca, hasn't he? Earlier earlier on, so um, forty to one then Caravel. Um, what uh, what else are you going to be sticking in, Jessica? Uh, another bit of a long shot, actually, and that is number eleven, Fast Boat. This may be a little bit more of a sentimental pick. I uh, am a good um, house girl, and I, Fast Boat ran at Sam Houston. It ran a dynamite race this year, and I really liked him then. I've liked watching this horse. He's not you know, this blue blooded, fancy, expensive horse. He just shows up and does the job. He's one of those hard knocking kind of war horse types. And I really like him. I think he can honestly get a good piece of it. I don't know if he's good enough to win, but he's good enough to get a few, a few of my dollars. Okay, a couple of huge prices then uh, against the field from uh, from Jessica. Uh, Golden Pal is the short price favourite uh, here. Uh, we've got to European Challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, I want your selection, Tom, and a quick rundown of the European Challenges because, of course, um, this is a fairly new race. Uh, yes. And uh, it was only last year that uh, the Europeans uh, managed to get a sniff with glass slippers. Um, bit of a well, much much tighter uh, uh, test here today. But obviously, Emiratiana, a case of you. There are uh, more horses than normal. Uh, from uh, from these shores going over for a challenge. Yeah, I think our trainers have realised that we can actually now compete um, in these sprint races for older horses. Um, Glass Slippers obviously burst through the gap last year. Great rubber, Tom Eves. It's worth noting this is uh, this race this year is now five furlongs, not five and a half furlongs. Mm. That was the same, which was the trip at Keeneland last year. And I she think, needed every yard. Yeah, she? I think that's going to play against Glass Slippers. I think she's going to be um, ridden along early, and then we'll be staying on. But I don't know if she'll get there. Um, like Jessica, I think Golden Pound's an awful favourite, arguably the lay of the meet. Um, I want to be opposing him, even though he's drawn really well in gate three, which is sure to attract attention. My selection is going to be gear jockey. Now, he was one of four anti-post bets I've had. And when I saw the draw, watched the draw on Monday with Brittany Ayrton and Nick Luck, I almost cried when I saw him in gate 10, because I thought <laughs> he's got a, an unbelievable chance if he's drawn inside. 
Um, I didn't want to be drawn outside. He's drawn gate 10, so that's a slight negative. Jose Lescano gave him a great ride um, at Kentucky Downs last time in the turf sprint. I think he's just improved dramatically since he's gone sprinting. Um, Rusty Arnold's one of the shrewdest trainers about, and I think he's a big player in here. Um, we shouldn't overlook the Brits. I think, mm. you know, uh, a case of you in the Abbey was really impressive, but again, needed every yard yeah. to get up on the line. I think the trip and the track will play against him. I mean, I think Emma Arteana has got to be very interesting. I mean, I know this horse, you know, won six furlongs first ground at Haydock last time out in the, the Sprint Cup, but it's rock solid form. Obviously, creative force and art power have given it a boost. He's also been round Chester, but, uh, <laughs> which mm. is going to help here. But it's that it's the cruising speed for Emma Arteana that I think will really help here from box two. Yeah, well, he wasn't too far off winter power, was he, in the month of early mm. on? So. He showed his cruising speed that day. He beat Starman last time out. Starman was obviously regarded yeah. over here as the best sprinter around. So his form stacks up. He's drawn nicely in gate two as well. Um, just inside Golden Pal. Should get a nice toe into the race. You can't rule him out. But uh, I'm going to stick loyal with Gear Jockey despite the draw. Gear Jockey it is then. Uh, and uh, uh, Jessica, for you? I'm going taking a swing. Let it never be said I'm afraid to pick a long shot. Uh, and I'll go with Caraval and Fast Boat. Okay, very well. And, uh, and Simon, what do you think of this race? Yeah, it's just interesting you saying it's actually been around since 2008, this race. And what was amazing when they introduced it, you thought it was going to be it was going to be a European, you know, the sort of race Europeans would win. It took till last year for Glass Slippers to be the first European winner, I think. And loads of trials. I remember the Star Spangled Banner getting beat at San Trinito. I thought it was a certainty. But, um, you know, so again, I think that always tempers my enthusiasm for the European runners. Uh, but I do like Emirati, I know a little bit of two, but the horse for me is Tamari, number nine, the, the other Wesley Ward horse. Uh, Travelled uh, to, um, you know, England. Run the Commonwealth Cup, and it really runs really well fresh. So I think uh, Kamari at nine to one would be the one for me. Okay, and it's also got a rest me red as well for Wesley Ward, who uh, has really improved since uh, since joining his connection. So again, another wide open race then, the Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint at 7.40 tomorrow. Uh, if you are watching at home, um, uh, just a reminder, this is normally an hour-long show, but there's way too much to go through. So we are going to be uh, we are going to be running, uh, from my estimation, I reckon, until about 7.15, 7.20. So uh, if you're enjoying it, you're watching at home, then please uh, like the, uh, the stream as well uh, and, uh, and get it. Get it, just get it involved in an algorithm. Everything's about algorithms these days. We need likes, we need subscriptions. Uh, that's, that's all that matters in life, apparently. So uh, do press that uh, uh, that thumbs up button and give us a like on YouTube if you're watching at home. As we move on uh, to the the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf here, where we have uh, joint favourites uh, in the shape of War, Like Goddess and Love. Seven to two, the pair. Love's only you is four to one. Odaria uh, is five to one. Rougier thirteen to two, and then sixteen to one uh, bar those uh, and uh, again just a, a little quirk of the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the the kind of races here we were talking about this off air Tom is that uh, you know Audari is coming back to defend her crown mm. but essentially uh, in a very different race she's got an extra fair long and a half to go so yeah, exactly. that is the, the quirk of switching uh, of switching um, uh, tracks Europeans have won five of the last ten Chad Brown's won four of the last ten yeah. so you need to be Chad Brown or a European but I don't think so this year. Right. right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I've set that I mean, up for you to, to, to <laughs> not knock it down as well. Look, the trends don't lie, but this year I think it's slightly different. I don't think it's the strongest Philly de Mers that we've seen. Um, obviously, Warlike Goddess has been dominating in New York. She's a, a real deep closer with a wicked turn of foot. She's facing tougher opposition here. It'll be interesting seeing how well she competes. But she's market leader. She's 72 favourite. Um, I, I kind of want to be opposing her. Love's been a bit disappointing since she won the Prince of Wales. Is at Royal Ascot as well. Um, obviously, Aidan O'Brien can get horses to, to battle right back and, uh, and re refine their best. But um, I don't want to be taking 72 about her doing that. I think that's quite risky. So the selection's going to be Love's Only You. A Japanese raider. Mm. Now, I know Jessica's already mentioned one Japanese raider, who I do think is interesting, actually, um, against Jack Christopher. But uh, Love's Only Use, my, my main Japanese fancy. He, he finished third. She finished third, sorry, behind Mishriff in the Shima Classic. That was a screamer of an effort. Was keen early, had to burst through a gap and actually hit the front, past um, Mishriff and Chronogelesis, and then got repassed close to yeah. home. Did, uh, had a, a pretty terrible trip throughout that as well. A bad, yeah, 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 a bad trip. You can definitely mark her up. Now, since then, she's run at Chartin and then Sapporo in the Sapporo Kinnan. She got beaten by a, a horse called Sadashi, the whitest horse I've ever seen. Uh, but again, she got a terrible trip that day as well. I think she figures to get a better trip here. Um, and I don't think it's that deep a race. Rougier, I'm, I'm not too sure if she'll handle the track or Dario's drawn badly. And as I mentioned about Love, I don't think she's at her best. So Love's only you is my selection here. 
Yeah, I mean, Mystery of Chronogenesis, Walton Street, it's, you know, it's, it's got some decent horses were surrounding her there at uh, Maida. Better horses than are in this race. Yeah, and she seems to have been out, stayed a little bit over a mile and a half and outpaced over ten. So a mile and three could be absolutely spot on for Love's Only You. But a very top-heavy market uh, here, Jessica. Uh, Warlike Goddess uh, heading it for the, uh, the American Challenge. Uh, what do you make of the, uh, the American uh, Defenders versus the European Challengers? I think this is a really interesting race. For me, if I'm playing a horizontal wager here, this is a race I have to go quite a few horses deep just to kind of feel that I'm covered. There are a few I, I'm tossing entirely. Ruggier, I think, really is not going to handle that kind of firm turf at, at all. I don't think Love is as good as she was last year. So those two I'm going to leave off of any tickets. But Love's only you. She's a beast. That race in Dubai was exceptional. Uh, that was a really exciting race to watch. I think she might be the star of this group. Looking for a little bit of value, too, with some of the domestic contenders. And I liked number 11, Dog Tag. I don't know if she's quite good enough to win against top international group, but she has home track advantage. She's run well at Del Mar. And you have to think Mandela and Jamie Roth, uh, the woman behind Alan J. Foxwoods, they're smarting a little bit after United had to sit out so close to the big race. So I'd love to see them have a good showing. OK, uh, Dog Tag then, who was beaten by going to Vegas. And again, I was looking at this race, Jessica, and I'm struggling to find anything that's going to challenge this one for the early lead. Yeah, you kind of wonder. If she gets an uncontested lead, everyone's going to be trying to catch her. Uh, that I think the pace might shake, shake out to be a little interesting here. Okay. I thought, yeah, I thought okay. going to Vegas was interesting because of that at 16-1. Uh, to 1. Um, What did you make of the European Challenge? You know, I, again, I'm, to I'm tossing Love a little bit. I'm tossing Rougier. I, I don't think this is going to be the Europeans' day here in this spot. Okay. And, uh, and okay. thoughts on Warlike Goddess's form? I am probably leading the fan club for English Channel as an underrated stallion. I don't know why they are continually not commercially popular when all they do is run and run well and run forever and do literally anything you ask of them from, you know, flat to jumps to anything. Really lightly race Philly. I didn't I tried to beat her last time and she made a liar out of me. So I think uh, she's the real deal. OK, well, that got us is a, a seven to two shot. Um, over to you, Simon, for, for the thoughts on this race. Again, a, a strong European challenge. And this is the this is the biggest prize love has been since, I mean, what, since she won the uh, won the guineas? I mean, she, uh, six months ago, uh, there was a potential that she was going to be the best horse in training. Now everyone's uh, completely written her off. Um, which love is going to turn up? Yeah, listen, I, I, I'm looking at her and thinking, well, she, you know, she's disappointed by her three-year-old. Uh, standards, but I mean, you know, the third to Mishap wasn't a disgrace. He absolutely flew home that day. Uh, the third in the King George again wasn't a disgrace. Adair and Mishriff last time out, you know, maybe you could sort of crab back being beaten by Paul Coco. But on time form ratings and stuff, she's still running to a level which gives her a massive chance here. And and Ada has always said she just wants this fast ground. She wants this fast ground. I think she'll go close to the pace. She's led before, or sat right behind the pace. Well, I think you made a good point. Only going to Vegas, I think, will be on the lead and there's plenty of hold up horses and sort of mid-pack horses so i reckon they'll be really positive i think she's got a great chance all i got is a huge filly i mean got form over 12 furlongs 11 furlongs and um, that my sister that proximity she was well beaten in last year's limit so i'm not sure how good that form is and so i do tend to gravitate to the europeans here um, and i think love or Aud i think has got a very similar profile to last year not quite at the quite same level but if you follow, look at the last uh, sort of the prep runs or trial runs uh, she's been running a similar level. So I'm going to agree. I think Love and Lordari are the two that I'd focus on. I think they're the best fillies in the race. And I think um, it would be like, just like Aidan O'Brien actually to round off Love's career with a win here. And that would be it. And off the breathing shed. Yeah, and um, again, if she's uh, she could well be on the heels of that early speed as well, uh, as she was at uh, Royal Ascot, where she beat Ordaria. So um... she was, I, I would just quickly like to mention Pocket Square is a very interesting horse because again, mm. it's, it's a terrific race. But Chad Brown, I read all he's doing. I just want to mention him. He's got the most incredible Breeders' Cup record. I think he's eleven winners from sixty-four rides. He's ice cool. He rides winners at huge prices as well as favourites. And and this Pocket Square was a Roger Charlton horse. Was a good two-year-old. Was. And actually, those last two wins for Chad Brown but were really impressive. Stepping up in trip, but I think she could be capable of running well at a big price for Judd Monty. Yeah, I think uh, when being uh, beaten on debut at, uh, at Yarmouth uh, uh, a, <laughs> a couple of seasons ago, if you'd said uh, had a chance in the uh, Breeders' Cup fully in Mare Turf, you'd be uh, told you were going a bit mad. But again, Chad Brown in this race, fantastic record. Chad Brown in pretty much every race is <laughs> a fantastic record as well. So, uh, Tom, how are we playing it? Love's only you to win. Love's only you it is. Uh, and Jessica, you're boxing a few up? Yeah, I'm going to box a few up. I'm going to use Love's Only You, Dog Tag, More Like Goddess, and maybe throw in Odaria, but that's that's about it. 
Okay. Simon? Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go Love and Odaria, but I might have an each way to play on Pocket Square. Okay, and uh, I'm just a little bit tempted by that potential easy lead for going to uh, going to Vegas, uh, and uh, looks a big price for uh, for a horse who could uh, grind them out from the front there for the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf. Uh, moving on then, uh, we've got uh, four more races to cover here at uh, Del Mar, and the Breeders' Cup Mile is uh, up next, and uh, and Space Blues who. Uh, is a, a proper seven furlong specialist. He's stepping up uh, in trip here. Uh, he did break his maiden over a mile, of course. Uh, we know him for uh, for winning all those seven furlong races uh, in Europe. And he's nine to four for the Breeders' Cup mile here. Uh, Mo Forza is the uh, the American challenger for Peter Miller at eleven to two. Mother Earth is eight to one. In Love ten to one. Uh, Blowout at eleven to one. Smooth like straight twelves. Master of the Seas fourteens. Pearls galore fourteens. And bigger prices the rest. So Space Blues then heading the market here. Tom, really classy horse. We know he's Group One quality. Um, last ten years, though, the European challenges. It's the three-year-olds that have really dominated here. Uh, and uh, of course, he is stepping up in uh, in trip. What did you uh, What did you make of him? Yeah, he's stepping up in trip from seven finals to a mile. I think that's the one negative I have. The, the positive about that though is the fact that he has a sprinter's tactical speed. He can get into a decent position early. He won't be too far back. Charlie Appleby's horses seem to have drawn well across the two days. Mm. Um, I mean, everything's gone right for Charlie Appleby this season and Godolphin yeah. as well. Um, I, I think he's a major player. He deserves to be favourite after his foray win. He clearly travels well, goes to Maidan, to France and whatnot, and always performs. I just don't like his price, um, and that, that kind of puts me off him. I don't see too many front runners in this race. I mean, Mo Forza, who's the second favourite um, with Coral here at 11-2, to he comes from off the speed. Um, Mother Earth's going to be ridden behind as well. She was, uh, she's a three-year-old filly. She's improving. Last uh, last year at the Breeders' Cup, she actually flew home and, and caught the eye. Um, and again, um, at Ascot and Champions Day, she was she actually posted the fastest closing section to win that race. She was given so much to do. <laughs> yeah, I, but I, I feel like that might be the case again today. Now, I, I wouldn't be surprised if she did win because she's a classy angle in this in this field. But uh, I think the pace scenario might not suit her. So. I want to be on a horse on the speed here. I can only see two horses that are going to go forward. Um, one's Blowout, um, who I don't think is good enough, and the other is Smooth Like Straight, who's going to be my pick from an inside gate. Get some Umberto Rispoli, arguably the best turf rider um, on the West Coast, although Flavian Pratt may argue that one. Um, been performing at the top level, had five starts since his debut. Had five starts at Del Mar, two victories, three seconds. Really consistent performer, rarely ever out of the frame. You're getting a double-figure price um, and likely to always be in the vanguard. So Smooth Like Straight for me, Ross. Okay, smooth like straight then, who is a 12 to 1 shot uh, here. Uh, again, that's uh, two races on the bounce that Umberto Rispoli could have uh, uh, the uh, the race run to suit on the speed for, uh, for him. Uh, Jessica, Space Blues uh, up in trip. Uh, uh, tell us about the, uh, the the main US challenger, Mo Forza, and, uh, and, and what else you like in this race. Well, Space Blues, I would not talk you off of. I think he's about as legitimate of a short price as you'll find on the day. Now, Mo Forza, I do not like. Um, but if you like Mo Forza, I don't know why you don't like Hit the Road, who I think is going to offer actually a little bit more value. And he's been really keeping good company with him. I know Florent Giroux went elsewhere, but it's never a downside when you get John Velasquez aboard. And while I've been sitting on the sidelines this Breeders' Cup, I have been thoroughly enjoying all of the coverage from our friends there. And watching Hit the Road on the track, he's been a real standout out to me. Uh, I think this is a horse who looks like he's coming into this race as well as he has been and uh, has shown he can run with most of this field at this point. So I think he offers a little bit of value. Sentimental rooting, I'll admit it, but she will still take a few of my dollars and I will be so happy if got Sto if got Stormy wins. She has just been so grand and so fun to watch and I understand she is up against it, against this field. This is a world-class group, but she has won at Del Mar. She ships well. And when she fires, when she runs her A game, she's as good as anyone. I was say the the RPR at uh, Saratoga gives her a real chance, though, doesn't she? Doesn't it? A repeat of that puts her right in contention. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I mean, a lot of the horses have kind of been beating each other as well. I mean, you, you've got horses like I mean, Raging Bull's a funny <clears> one. <throat> um, a complete all or nothing. Yeah. Either looks an absolute world beater or completely disinterested. Um, you were nodding away when uh, Hit the Road was uh, mentioned there. Yeah, this is one of the few races I will be playing the exotics, um, forecast, tricast or whatnot. I think Hit the Road's a real big player and at a huge price as well. Um, he just hasn't had the dream trip the last twice. Small fields, coming off the speed, just not able to get to um, the front runners. Been running the same races as smooth like straight. I think uh, if there is a pace collapse, then he's going to be one at a huge price, price that's worth playing. 
Okay, uh, wide open race then here, uh, Simon, despite the fact that Space Blues is, uh, is favoured again. I mean, there's a lot of horses here of RPRs, you know, 114, 150, 116, uh, and then you've got Space Blues, 123 last time out, uh, uh, back in the the Morris de Geese last year at 121. So, are we, are, we, are we overlooking the obvious, clear, best horse in the race? Uh, well, I think it's worth taking him on. I mean, he's nine to four with us. He's, he's drawn well enough in three. He looks the right sort of profile. That kind of seven furlong type horse is going to love the, the, the track. But, um, but you only have to look at the role of honour for the Breeders' Cup miles. He's some of the biggest shockers last year, Order of Australia at 66 to one. And um, I think you've got to play value. This is the most competitive race. I mean, I think you mentioned Hit the Road, trained by Englishman Dan Blacker, Christina Blacker, um, obviously a TVG presenter is, 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 is his wife. And, um, Ran very well two years ago in the Breeze Cup Junior Turf. I think he can go well. Mother Earth, we haven't really mentioned that, but I mean, her consistency is ludicrous. Ten group ones, only out of the three once. That was the last time out when um, a strong finishing fifth behind Baid. And um, she ran well over over in uh, Keenan last year. So I think um, you can make a case for so many. I, I, I even, at a massive price, Eva was fourth last year. And there's a repeater angle of the Breeze Cup mile that's happened many times over the year. Years and um, he does he, his forms look great, but he throws in big figures all the time. I thought he was okay at a massive price, so uh, I'll probably go for a bit of value because I think Space Blues is probably worth taking on. Okay, uh, Space Blues being taken on then, and I'll, I'll give a shout out to Master of the Season. I hope that uh, he's a bit keen, he's hopefully ridden a bit more uh, prominently. Uh, I mean, that poetic flair on in the, uh, the guinea stands out. Uh, and uh, you can make excuses for both those ones. Way too soft at Ascot last time out, and he clearly needed the return behind Ben Battle, so um, he's got a real. Uh, uh, fast ground, big field mile, which is the uh, the uh, uh, the conditions where he showed his best at uh, Newmarket. So again, another absolutely wide open contest. Uh, Jessica, how are you playing it? I'm going to be using uh, Gut Stormy, Hit the Road, and kind of building those tickets around Space Blues. I think he is a really legitimate top contender here. Though between us all, we have the field pretty well covered. <laughs> yeah. It's starting to get that the feel that way, isn't it, Jessica? But um, pretty much uh, every race. Uh, yeah, we, we're not leaving any any stone uncovered. <laughs> but uh, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed we can make that profit, Tom. What are you playing? Smooth like straight for me, Ross. Smooth like straight. Simon? Yeah, Mother Earth and uh, Eva are, are, are for, for a fun throw each way, but... Okay, very well. Breeders' Cup mile then uh, uh, leads us uh, on to the dirt uh, for the the Breeders' Cup uh, distaff uh, here. And again, uh, one of the, uh, the shortest price uh, favourites uh, of the uh, the week. The short prices uh, appear to be all on the dirt uh, over the next uh, couple of days at, uh, at Del Mar. And Latruska is six to four market leader here against uh, Malathart five to one. Uh, she dares the devil thirteen to two. Royal Flag seven to one. Private Mission at ten to one. Uh, Eleven to one. Clarier and twelve to one. Dunbar Road, uh, Latruska, very short indeed. Sam, I'm going to come to you first uh, for this one because uh, I just want to know how people are going to be playing these uh, these short prices. There's quite a few uh, dirt favourites. Will people be uh, sticking them together in multis? Yeah, hey, I think they will. Yeah, I was not half looking at that myself. You know, sort of Gamine and uh, Jackie's Warrior uh, in, the, in the sprint um, and Latruska here in the distaff. I think they are the sort of ones that normally one of them gets beat. Though, so that's the trouble. You know, we don't know which one, but. Uh, I mean, I think Latruska's got more on her plate than maybe the others because Malafat, obviously, won the Kentucky Oaks. She's really good. Uh, she does She does the devil. Has got form with Latruska, and you can make a case for her and Royal Flag. Is it will be staying on late? So um, it really is a question of whether you believe is going to keep grinding out these wins or is worth taking on. Okay. Uh, but Jessica Latruska, um, the question is uh, whether she can battle off other early pace contenders. But she did it at Saratoga uh, in incredibly game fashion. So um, can they get a beat? She's been the horse of the year for me at this point. She has been, to me, what's everything good about horse racing when you see a kind of a smaller outfit, get a truly great horse, and have a really ambitious and fun campaign. A lot of fans have gotten to enjoy her this year, and I'm really happy to have been one of them. You'll know whether she's going to win in the opening quarter if you watch what her ears are doing. This is a horse who, when she, you know, when she gets out there and she's by herself and her, her ears are just kind of like this, no one's catching her. That's it. Um, of course, you don't know that for the race. I have some concerns that Baffert's Philly um, private mission is going to take it to her early and try to soften her up, setting it up maybe for a horse like Dunbar Road from off the pace. But Latruska, she's just too classy. Uh, I think this is her race to lose. 
Okay. Um, uh, are you in agreement, Tom Collins? Yeah, Jessica summed up absolutely exactly how I would have done. Um, well, thanks for coming, Tom. <laughs> <I think>. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, private mission and horologist are the two that are going to go forward, um, as well as Latrisco. If they can press her early, then maybe this will set up for the, clo the closer. I think Dunbar Road and Royal Flag are both intriguing um, for Chad Brown, but Latrisco is the speed of the speed in here. She has more natural pace than both private mission and horologist. Our Red Ortiz got on well with her last time, although she had a look around in the straight. Um, I think if, if the real Latrisca turns up, and she does, she is virtually the real Latrisca every time we see her. She's won 17 of 22 races um, and seven of her last eight. If she turns up, I think she'll win. Can we just have a word on Malathat though? Because I mean, that is, I mean, that is a proper, I mean, we're talking dirt pedigrees, top class dirt pedigrees, and that, that, that figure last time out uh, suggests that uh, as a three-year-old, we don't quite know how much was coming. I mean, she's the champion three-year-old filly. She's by Curling, represents Todd Pletcher, John Velasquez, leading team, Shadwell as well. Um, she's sixth from seven in her career, and her sole defeat came when in the American Oaks when she was forced to make the speed, which wouldn't have suited her. And that's not going to happen here, is it? It <laughs> definitely won't happen here. And she's been prepped for this race since August, working really nicely as well. I've seen a few um, videos of her working on the track. So she's a big player. I just don't think she has the class of Latrisca. Mm. Oh, yeah, I was Simon. I was play, I was looking at this, and, and I, I, I like Latruska, but these are the kind of races where I think Latruska's kind of beat everything else in here, apart from Malathar. And I know I know what's going to happen. I'm going to put Malathar in the each ways, back it as an each way thievery at five to one, and it'll finish. She'll finish second to Latruska, but I can't help but feel that that one looks the obvious alternative to the market leader. But yeah, six to four, Latruska. Yeah, I think so. I think Malathar really is interesting because it's like a clash of the generations, isn't it? You, you don't um, you don't really know how they matched up. Completely. So I think that at the price is five to one Malafat versus six to one Latrisca. I think Malafat is definitely worth the play. I mean, it's a big year for Shad. Well, obviously they're they're slimming down their horse population significantly after the death of Sheikh Hamdan, but they're going to keep the quality. And in terms of their top horses across the world, Malafat's bang up there. You know, with the best of them. Okay. Uh, how are you playing it, Simon? I'm going to back Malafat definitely. Yeah, I think Latrisca. If she wins, fantastic. But I think Malafat's too big a price at five to one. Okay. And Jessica. Rooting for Latruska, playing Latruska uh, in some horizontals. I'll probably use her as a single, but I'm going to back that up with some wagers on Malathat and also on Dunbar Road. One point on Malathat I do want to make is I did get to see her in person this summer at Saratoga. And what a physically mature filly she is. And I can imagine she's only filled out and developed more since this summer. But she walked into the paddock and she looked like a colt. She, you know, some of the three-year-old fillies, especially that time of the year, they look a little slight. They look a little feminine. And she's... She's a solid filly. I think she has as much class as anyone. Okay. Uh, that's okay. good. You, you, you're convincing me here that, uh, that each way wager might get a little bit bigger on Malathat. You Malifet. blame me also when Latruska dusts her. Yeah, that's a, to be fair, you also told me that would happen as well. So, uh, you, you, yeah, we'll, we'll go for Let me just straight forecast it. But, uh, uh, Tom? I think Latruska wins this race, probably in price-wise. I haven't finalised my selections yet, I have to say. But uh, I think I'll probably put up Dunbar Road um, each way at the prices. But uh, I think is probably too good. OK. Uh, at uh, Dunbar Road each way for Alan Keane. Uh, Alan the Scotsman also likes Dunbar Road as well. Uh, Latruska is the best bet for predictions guy. Uh, get on Latruska, says Offworld. Latruska, yes, says Tom Williams. Yes, little Latruska, says David Bromhead. <laughs> so uh, clearly there is quite the fan club for Latruska at uh, home uh, and uh, uh, we've got two races to go uh, as we move on to uh, the uh, the 11.40 and the 12.40 the two where uh, every year I go I'd love to watch them but I wish they were earlier because I want to go to bed uh, but uh, <laughs> they're cracky races this year they really are uh, and the the Breeders' Cup turf uh, Tarnawa uh, again uh, what a uh, what an absolute uh, top class mare she is she's 11 to 8 favourite here uh, and her uh, job has been made a little bit easier by domestic spending uh, being uh, scratched this morning. Tiona is 13 to 2, 8 to 1 Yabia, 9 to 1 Walter Street, Sisfahan 10s, 16 to 1 uh, Gufo and Broom, and bigger prices the rest. Tom Collins, Tarnawa, won this last year. I think it's fair to say no one's going to disagree that Tarnawa is the best horse in the race, mm -hmm. but from box 13, <coughs> doesn't necessarily mean it's going to unfold perfectly. Well, gate 11 now, and that may of help. Course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The two non runners inside, domestic spending and United being taken out. Look, I was with domestic spending prior to the withdrawal, um, the scratching. I thought he was the, she was the main player. Uh, he, sorry, was the main player in here. But um, look, Tanawa is, is the horse to beat. She was brilliant in the arcs, finished second. Um, last year in this in this race, she bolted up despite stumbling at the start and not getting the dream trip. She had to go eight or nine wide around the bend at Keeneland and still won. She is the horse to beat. I have to take her on, though. I don't like the draw. Um, and at the price, 11 to 8, do I want to take the risk that she's going to be pitched wide around the bends? Probably not. Um, so the horse I came down on was Sisfahan. 
Now, we've already seen one big German shock mm -hmm. this year uh, to Kato Tasso in the, uh, in the arc. And he went off a lot bigger price than Sisfahan's going to go off here. They have formed together. Tokato Tasso beat Sisfahan by a length at Baden-Baden. Um, prior to that, Sisfahan won the German derby in, in a good time under Andre Starker, who rides, usually gets his pick um, in Germany. Now, I don't know too much about the trainer, Henk Gru, but I like the way he's been uh, moving this colt up through the ranks. Last time at Cologne, third behind Alpenista, and it will have to improve. Alpenista wouldn't win this race. However, I think the softer ground might suit Sisfahan um, and at a double-figure price, I'm willing to take the chance. Alpinista wouldn't win this race, is a, uh, I think a strong claim there, but uh, we, we might see next season. Uh, Christian de Mora, quite the, uh, the one ride from what I can tell, much yep. over the two days at Del Mar. <laughs> Mar. Talk about pressure. I know, all there for one ride. He, he's delivered under pressure before, though. He's mm. a jockey that's come onto the main stage in the last few years, riding some big horses as well along the way. Um, I think he'll hit the frame here on this colt. Okay. Uh, Jessica Tarnawa, uh, very uh, rarely uh, does she put a foot wrong at the top level, but uh, can, uh, can you back her at this price from that draw? So I feel a little silly acting like she is a silver medal for me, but this was the race that had my strongest opinion over the course of two days, and that was United. I was all in on United at this big price. I thought it was so clever. Johnny V, everything. Mandela, this was going to be great. But in horse racing, you know, things happen. So back to the drawing board. I will happily default to Tarnawa, who is a very deserving, legitimate top contender here. Her effort last year was excellent. Her form has been very solid this year as well. She just shows up. That said, I'm going to try to hunt down some more value in here, but back to the drawing board for me in a lot of ways because I also thought domestic spending had a very legitimate chance. Okay, uh, so yeah, I, it's, I hate it, especially this is the problem with previewing races so far in advance, isn't it, Jesse? You get the uh, you, you get the way uh, you think it's going to unfold in your mind, and then they don't even they don't even turn up. <laughs> but uh, what else? That's it. What else is in the mix for you? You know, that's kind of it at this point. I also like Tiona a little bit. Three-year-old filly taking on older males. But, I mean, if you judge a horse by the company they've been keeping, Snowfall's about as good as they get. So I think she has a chance to make a very good showing of herself. Okay, then. Uh, so this uh, race uh, blown apart by those two non-runners uh, earlier on. I, I mean, I was, I was saying this to Tom off, uh, off air, and uh, he, uh, he thought I'd gone absolutely insane. But I think Broom's going to run a big race here. Um, I think this horse has been... Everyone just turned off Ross. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it might come back to it to haunt me. Um, but uh, I think people have a, a view of how good a broom is. And I think that has been uh, kind of put uh, to, to bed a little bit this season. This horse has run to, to, to RPRs of 119 three times in the past five months. Behind Wonderful Tonight, winning at Song Clue, and then behind Deep Bond at Longchamp. Uh, a mile and a half. Uh, big field, box six now, in theory, should get a lovely sit. And I can't understand why why Broom is a is a 16 to 1 shot. I, th I think it's a bit of bias towards Broom. Simon, I forgot to, I forgot to say yeah, your name there. I'm just assuming you'd know I was talking looking, to you. You're looking at Tom, he's really giving you dodgy look. You turn to me, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to surprise you. He's, he's my live outsider. He's got Frankie Dottori on board. When he's been ridden with restraint, like almost properly, He's run his best figures. He's been rushed up to the lead and, you know, and use, you know, not, I'm not saying used as a pacemaker, but, you, you know, ridden really prominently at times when there have been other O'Brien horses in races. But earlier in the season, you know, he ran some really nice figures. And I just thought, if you, if you, if you, if you want to oppose Tarnawa, I don't think there's a huge amount between the rest of them, really. And so you could, you know, see, see a surprise. I thought Broom might be interesting. But um, I must have a, a bit, you know, I think Tarnawa, this is her race to lose, definitely. I mean, you... Tiona, I think, is a false price, 32, based on that snookness of the Vermeer win. Uh, Yabir and Walton Street, I don't think on the balance of their form, are anywhere near a grade one, the grade one form at the time I was run to. Uh, I, think it's, I think Sis for fans worth the bet, isn't it, because of that Tocas of Tassa form, and, and German horses have run well, the British Cup before with that kind of profile. But beyond that, I just think Tana was a good thing, really, and, and it probably should it maybe should be odds on. She's drawn wide, we've plenty of time to get a position, there's lots of pace and mid-back balls, I'm sure they'll hold her up. But I think she's probably not my idea of the best favourite on the card. The one that would be interesting if Mogul snuck into the race. There was one more scratch in because they've taken Mogul over there. He's got bits of form on fast ground, but you know, that was that French Group one win. You know, I just think he might be another crazy lover. So keep an eye out for him. But I'm with Broom and Tarnal for me. Okay, I mean, if I if I'm mad for for for, for <laughs> siding with Broom again, then come on, what are we saying about what are we saying about Mogul? I think uh, hopefully he stays on the also eligible list to uh, save Simon's <laughs> blushes. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Breeders' Cup turf, uh, Jessica. Um, your uh, 
you, you, you almost see bronze medal uh, selection in here. <laughs> you know, Tarnawa, uh, really quality Philly. I also might put a little saver bet on Channel Maker. He needs to do better than his recent form, but I, maybe he gets a piece. Yeah, Channel Maker, we've, uh, we've seen running some uh, some really good races over the years. Uh, Tom Collins? Set for Hunt. <laughs> yes, we have. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hence yeah. the uh, hence the what forty to one, fifty to one price. You don't <laughs> yeah. quite know which channel maker you're going to get. Yes, uh, sits behind for me, Ross. Okay, uh, Simon. Yeah, I'm going to go turn out. Probably, my, my, yeah, probably my, the, the one thing I really, really fancy, but I will have a few quid on Broom now we've talked ourselves into it, Ross. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, and hope for a Frankie de Tori masterclass. Yeah, I agree. Broom uh, four places. Simon, I'm going to have to double check. It was, uh, uh, yeah, four places, sixteen to one each way. There we go. Yes, four places. Lovely stuff. Uh, Breeders Cup uh, Classic then uh, rounds off the uh, the card at uh, at Del Mar uh, on uh, on Sunday uh, uh, officially for uh, for us, uh, and uh, we have the uh, the Brad Cox Show at the at the top of the uh, the betting here with Nick's Go at five to two, Essential Quality at eleven to four, Hot Rod Charlie at nine to two, Medina Spirit at six to one, seven to one, Max Player at fourteen to one. Uh, bar those uh, Nick's Go stepping up in trip here, uh, Jessica, uh, and up against. Um, quite a few horses, essential quality, Hot Rod Charlie, Medina Spirit, who have, uh, they've got, there's a few scores to settle in this race, isn't there? This is, I think, one of the most fascinating Breeders' Cup Classic fields we've seen in a long time. I don't know if this will go down as one of the greatest Classic fields, but I think this is a fascinating race. And Essential Quality has almost this Rodney Dangerfield quality to him, where he's done literally everything, <laughs> and he gets a little, he really doesn't get all that much respect. I was not, and, I was not expecting Rodney Dangerfield to be name checked on the show, but I'm glad, I'm glad he is. I'm glad I could do that for you. <laughs> I'm going to watch so Caddy essential... Shack when I get home. Sorry, carry on, Jessica, as you were. <laughs> so essential quality. He's been interesting to watch all year. And a point I've made about him a couple of times that he's by Tappet. And, you know, they're not really known for being um, the best acting cults. They, I, I joke about the Tappet brain sometimes. And he's been kind of an anomaly. He's been quiet. He's been very well beha behaved you know, very, very within himself. This week at Del Mar, he has jogged onto the track each morning like he is on fire. I have never seen a horse so on the muscle and so keyed up to train. Uh, I think he is sitting on probably the race of his life, if his body language and the way he looks is any indication. Okay, uh, so uh, a fascinating uh, field then uh, here, uh, Jessica. Are you, if, if it's that fascinating, are you struggling to find a way in? So I'm a little biased towards Hot Rod Charlie here, who I saw win the Pennsylvania Derby, and I thought he just physically had matured so much. Now, those of us who've done this uh, public handicapping and having public opinions for a long time, occasionally we have some really bad takes, and I'll let you guys know my worst one of the year. And that was after the Louisiana Derby. It was right around my birthday. I was celebrating my birthday with my best friend. I may have had a glass of champagne. And I tweeted... Boy, the Louisiana Derby, no Kentucky Derby winner. What a terrible, like, nothing good is coming out of that race. And boy, I just could not have been more wrong every race as the year went on. So, um, Hot Rod Charlie, he's just continued to prove me wrong and ran a truly dynamite race in Pennsylvania. Okay, very well. Uh, Tom Collins, um, this is, uh, again, it's uh, matchstick in the uh, in the eyes. Well, for most of us, you're a... Yeah, you're, you're a night owl anyway. It's so. middle of the evening for me. Yeah, um. yeah you'll be uh, sitting down for supper. Um, a bit of Charlestown after, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Breeders' Cup Classic, then. What? <laughs> he is. He's, he's, I think you, 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 you live in the wrong country, mate. I, yeah, I do. I, I genuinely do. But um, look, this is going to be a great race. I can't wait for it. The hour gap between um, the penultimate Breeders' Cup race and the Classic is a bit of a nightmare. But uh, I, I, it's just going to be full of nerves and excitement leading up to the main race. We've got four brilliant horses, potentially five if you want to include Art Collector. I'm not putting in Medina Spirit. I don't think he's good enough um, in this field. Max Player is a horse I love, um, but I can't side with him against the likes of Nick's Go, um, Essential Quality and Hot Rod Charlie. The selection is going to be Hot Rod Charlie. Now, I fully respect EQ. Uh, he's one of my favourite horses in training. He always gives everything. And as Jessica said, he's looked brilliant in his, uh, in his morning works and breezes. I've had the privilege to watch him on, on YouTube. I don't think anyone's ever said the privilege to watch on YouTube before. But, uh, and he's looked so We're good. We're on YouTube right now, Tom. We're Look, everyone's live. had the privilege of watching us. You see that? <laughs> to watch on YouTube right now. Exactly. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Nobody nobody watches TV anymore, Tom. <laughs> it's true. Um, look, I, I imagine EQ's going to run a big race. Nick Sko's going to set the speed. I don't think the uh, the trip's ideal for him. Um, he's obviously got a massive fan club and proved beyond recognition for Brad Cox, but I think Essential Quality is a better horse. 
But Hot Rod Charlie, this is a horse who deserves another big win. Now, I know he's just won a grade one in the Penn Derby. He got chucked out from the Haskell. Um, he won that race, got DQ'd, probably rightly so. Um, prior to that in the Belmont, finished second to essential quality. Now, he ran his heart out. That, I've never seen such a game effort in defeat. Um, he was on a red-hot pace, battled all the way to the line, drew clear to third. I hope um, Hot Rod Charlie wins. And also, his connections, his owners, are the liveliest group of people <laughs> I think I've ever witnessed. So if, he, if Hot Rod Charlie wins the Classic, you won't be able to hear what anyone says on the TV. It'll just be the raucous sounds from the crowd. OK, good stuff. Well, um, it's a shame we'll be at home in the, uh, in the living room watching it, Simon, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, listen, I mean, actually, the one thing I'd say from, you know, I know you, Ross, you said you went to San Trinidad a few years ago. My experience of Breeders' Cups is, um, whilst I enjoy all 14 races, even, with, you know, even you know wherever you are, whether it's Churchill Downs or San Trinita, the atmosphere changes after the Breeders' Cup turf. It's like everyone there gets that it's now the big one. And the big one is the Breeders' Cup Classic. But, you know, when the, the, the crackle of atmosphere when the horse from the paddock and they're going down to the start and the, you know, they're going behind the stall, there's nothing like it. And then when the gates open, there is a roar. And, you know, and uh, it makes, well, you know, really, you know, the hairs don't want to back, back and make even thinking about it. And uh, and this race, as Jessica said, it may not be in terms of quality, you know, as great a British Cup Classic would have. But in terms of a compelling watch with all the pace in the race, Dick's go with that speed. Will he stay? It's such a quality. They will make will also wants to be bang up there. Pomer Charlie will be right close to the pace. And Dina Spirit's done it all from the front, but drawn wide. Max Player, uh, even our collector, will be quite prominent. So, I don't think anything's going to come from behind. The horses from behind don't look good enough unless it's an absolute boil over. So which horse is going to last home? For me, Belmont form, essential quality, strong, lovely, handsome uh, three-year-old. I'm going to go with essential quality to win this for Gazzolfi, which in itself will be a landmark moment for, for that thing. Okay, very well. Plenty of opinions then in the uh, in the classic. Like I said, the, the atmosphere did change. I mean, this is, you said you got the whole hour. Uh, Tony Bennett was uh, <laughs> currently bel belted out a few at, uh, at Santa Anita, uh, but of course, when I went to went to see it uh, at Fort Land one, uh, and I don't think yeah. um, I don't think anyone had backed him by the uh, by the reaction <laughs> at uh, Santa Anita after they uh, they crossed the line. So um, the the Breeders' Cup Classic then we were uh, uh, we, we, we got all sorts of opinions here. I can't quite work it. I mean, I think everyone fancies. There's, there's bets with hearts, there's bets with heads. Um, <laughs> Jessica, how are you going to play this from a from a handicapping point of view? One point, the Breeders' Cup Classic is, is just one of the most special sporting events to me. And Simon, I mean, you touched on this way earlier at the start of the show. Uh, Saki and Tisnow remains the single greatest sporting event I've ever seen in person. Uh, that is the race that I think of um, that still gives me chills every time I watch it. And I think me we're too. in for a real, a real treat here. And... Uh, essential quality gets my respect. I think he'll end his career on a high note. I wish he wasn't retiring at three, but that is a talk for another day. <laughs> it is, yeah, yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm definitely missing my train at this rate, so we can't go into, uh, into that. But, uh, <laughs> um, Tom, what wins the classic? Hot Rod Charlie. I respect essential quality, but Hot Rod Charlie for me. Okay, and uh, and Simon? Yeah, essential quality for me, all over him. All right, very well. See if we've got any uh, selections on the uh, on the last. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Uh, Nick's go is going to struggle over uh, Tim Furlong, says uh, Fezzi McFadden. Uh, Callie Chrome is on Art Collector, uh, and uh, uh, and that's about it for the uh, the classic. Again, it's uh, quite a few people clearly have uh, have also fallen asleep between the eleven forty and the twelve forty. They haven't quite made it over that uh, uh, that uh, that midnight uh, line, but. Um, uh, Simon, now I'll, I'm going to say we were going to rattle through the other dirt races, but um, I genuinely am going to have to uh, go home. <laughs> yes, yes, so we'll go home. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, Simon, do you do you have a um, very quickly in ten words or less best bet on the other races we haven't mentioned? Oh, I can't no. give you one. Okay, fair enough. That's even better. Great, fantastic. Uh, Jessica, Jackie's Warriors, the single of the day. Jackie's Warrior, single of the day. Then there we go, lovely stuff. Simon? Yeah, probably Jackie's Warrior. I'm sure Who's the Dirt Mile? Dirt Mile, anyone fancy one of the Dirt Mile? Not overly. Not yet, anyway. I've still got like, 24 hours of practice. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, come on. Yeah, we'll... Uh, need the racing boat. We need a, we need a, um, a director's cut on, uh, on Saturday morning, don't we? Uh, to, uh, to come back for this. Okay, that is pretty much uh, the, uh, the Breeders' Cup uh, at Del Mar uh, preview there. Um, let's see if we could narrow that down. To, uh, to a nap and a best bet over the course of those, uh, those races then. Uh, so uh, starting off with you, Tom Collins, if you had to have one wager at Del Mar this weekend, it would be? Jack Christopher in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, the 11.50 at Del Mar on Friday. Okay, Jack Christopher, it is. Uh, Jessica? 
Jasper Great and the Breeders Cup Juvenile. <laughs> there we go. That's more like it. That's the price of a nap we like. <laughs> and uh, Simon? Hello, you for me. What's the three part series on social we put together on her? But I genuinely think she's got a really good chance to give it up for this turn. Okay, uh, and I will uh, I'll go for for Malathart uh, in the uh, the distaff to to break the hearts of Latruska's uh, burgeoning fan club. Uh, thanks ever so much. It's been it's been great. Uh, we've had a few comments saying they like the longer version of the show, Simon. So uh, you're going to have to break it to Paul and Tom that it's going to be 90 <laughs> minutes from here on in. Uh, but uh, thank you ever so much for uh, for watching, Jessica. Thank you ever so much. Uh, sorry you couldn't make it to Delmar, but I hope you have a, a profitable weekend. Thank you. This was the next best thing. It was the next best thing. Uh, uh, ten length uh, second, I feel, but uh, <laughs> well, you've got to take what you can get. Tom, thanks ever so much. Cheers, Ross. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. The best two days in racing. Absolutely, and it's all on ITV, uh, ITV4 as well. And uh, and Simon, enjoy yourself. Yeah, listen, I think we'll all have to be at Keeneland next year. The four of us in the know from the Breeders' Cup. Well, well um, you're writing the check for that. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> You can get the uh, you can get the uh, the plane tickets for that one. Uh, thanks ever so much for for watching. This has been the note. Remember, of course, it is safer gambling week as well, and of course, uh, there's a lot going on at Del Mar. Uh, so do uh, take it easy over the course of the two days. Uh, thank you to to Tom, Jessica, and Simon. Thank you to everyone watching at home. I've been Ross Briley. This has been the note. Have a great weekend.